Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the docs going through the add classes section. Let's add unique classes inside dynamic lists. We are going to be able to create different types of layouts, different types of animations, and a lot of variation that we normally would not be able to get inside of a dynamic list. Add classes is super powerful, and it's going to really allow you to set up any type of structure or system. Some of these structures or systems can be set up with handwritten CSS. But this is a lot more visual. You can build your structures in Webflow, and then you can apply those add-on classes dynamically with the FN Suite CMS library. Let's go in and look at some use cases. We can create the classic flip left right layout. We can create ridiculous irregular cards. We can create a timeline. We can do all of these things inside one single dynamic list and the FN Suite CMS library. In the walkthroughs, we're going through all of these examples and more. So if you wanna see this working live, jump into the walkthroughs and you can see this in action. How to use it. The first thing we have to do is create an array to define the classes that we will be adding to the dynamic list. An array is a list. And as you can see here, we have two items in our list. Item one, comma, item two. And this is saying, hey, library, go ahead and add the flip row class and add the flip image class. We're telling the library to add the flip row class, class to add, to our project feature class. This is the target class that we're looking for. So find that project feature, go ahead and add flip row to it. Go ahead and find the project feature image and add flip image to it. So it's gonna look for these two classes, add the respective add-on classes, and this list is not actually doing anything. It's just telling the library, these are the pairs that we are trying to create. We can add as many pairs to this as we want. We can have one item in the list. We can have 100 items in the list. And it is just storing all of this in a variable called flip section. And now we're going to be able to use flip section later on in the code, and it's going to reference our entire list or array. Awesome. So now we have our two class pairings ready to go, stored in our variable, and now we can go and actually do something about it. We're gonna go and run this function. We're going to run the add classes component with our list. First thing we do is run a function. We're gonna create a new instance of the FN Suite CMS library, and it's going to be targeted at our blog post list. All of this new instance information is going to be stored in a variable called custom blog posts. If I went through that way too fast, please go back to the get started video. I'll go through this in depth really slow. And now we have two variables that we're working with here. We have our custom blog posts. We have our flip section. We're going to be using both of those when we actually go and run the component. We have our custom blog posts variable. We're gonna run the add classes component and look how we have add classes and then we have the options inside add classes. Nice. Our class array. The class array is the list that we created with our class pairings, flip section. You can name this whatever you want. It could be irregular cards or unique layout one, whatever you want. We can then set frequency and start. These two options is what makes this component so powerful. You can choose how often these classes are added and when they begin to be added inside the list. We're going to look at visuals of these just below. So don't worry if you don't understand what this means right now. Let's go into the code explanation. 
custom blog post. This is the variable that we just created. We're going to run that add components class, add components, add classes component on it. We have our variable of flip section. That's going to be the array that we have right up here, flip section. It's customizable. You can define your class target and define the class to add inside that list. This is the target we're looking for. This is what we're going to add to that target. Please know that you can have multiple arrays being applied to the same collection list. When you watch the walkthrough examples, as we go through more and more examples, it gets more complex and you'll see that we can create multiple lists here. We can, there are some examples where we have four different lists, four different arrays set, and we are calling on different arrays for the same exact collection list. So we're actually customizing so many different elements at so many different fre frequencies and start points that it really is creating this super unique type structure. You can see how these are alternating every other one. These have four different variations. So it, uh, it requires four different lists. It's really not that bad. Go through the walkthrough, check it out, and you can create as many of these lists and apply them as you see fit. Class array, this is where we pass the flip section. Class array, we're passing the flip section that we created for our list. Let's get into frequency and start. If you do not understand frequency and start, you will not be able to use add classes. It is a requirement that you understand how these work, and once you understand them, they make total sense. Frequency is the frequency of the classes being added to the list. Start specifies when the class should start being added to the list. Let's look at visuals to understand what this means. Two is a frequency and two is a start. Two is a start means that we're starting on number two. Frequency of two means every second item we're going to add these classes. So the affected items would be number two, we're starting here, and now every other item. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. This is perfect for an alternating left-right section or timeline or anything that is every other item being changed. Now let's go a little bit more advanced to two as a frequency and three as a start. First, let's start at number three, one, two, three. Two as a frequency means every other item in the list. So we start at three and now we go three, five, seven, nine, 11. With this type of example, you can set up alternating sections and specify just the first one as the feature, featured item. So you can set number one as featured, number two as the first normal, and then start your alternating left-right section. So that is two as frequency, three as the start. Let's do a few more here and you will fully understand this. Four as frequency, six as start. We start at six and every fourth item gets our class. Six, seven, eight, nine. This is the fourth item from six, number 10. And that is what we add the classes to, number six and number 10. And it will continue going in the list. This is frequency of three where the start is one. We start at number one and every third item gets our classes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And so on. Last one, zero as a frequency and three as a start. Frequency of zero means it is not happening more than once. There is no frequency. It's just being applied to the third item. We start at three, we apply the classes, and that's it. You can mix and match these. Like I was talking about before, when we create this array, we can create array one, array two, array three, array four, and then set different frequencies and starts to each of them. And that will allow us to create almost any structure inside of a CMS collection list. Play around with this. Send us what you come up with. This is definitely the most creative 
component of the entire library. We're very interested to see what you can come up with here. Establishing add-on classes. What's really nice about this method of adding classes inside dynamic lists is that we can define these classes inside Webflow and build these structures direct inside Webflow. Go ahead, open up a style guide page, put your normal CMS list component in there, and then start defining those add-on styles inside Webflow visually. We've now defined reverse flex, we've defined add-on classes with styles, and now when we go and ask for those styles to be added to the collection list with the library, those styles are defined inside Webflow on our Webflow style sheet, and we can go and now use those whenever we want without writing CSS by hand. We give that base class, we add the add-on class, Webflow knows what this is now, and now we can freely use it. If this doesn't make sense to you, or you want a visual of this, please go to the walkthrough example, the clonable site, where I go through all of these ad classes examples in detail. That's it for ad classes. Have fun with this and send us examples. We wanna see what you're doing with this. Enjoy. That's effing sweet.